I'm not pretty. I was never going to be pretty. I was never going to, you know, be a model or exploit that privilege for the past five years on minimalism. I was like, I don't know what more you guys want me to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, good morning, my handsome and pretty little cobras. Welcome back to the Cobra's Nest. So I woke up a couple hours ago. How many hours has it been? I woke up at like eight-ish and I've just, um, I had some morning classes and then after that I had a bit of time. So I was like, I'm gonna go video edit. So I just finished video editing another one of my pretty privileged videos. This one is pretty privileged videos if you're broke, a broke student. That was pretty fun to film. And I also incorporated into that a PR package just because I haven't really figured out a better way to incorporate them so I literally make them like a little commercial break so I was like okay <laughs> I'm gonna be going for a run shortly and I'll be queuing that soon but I just kind of want to take a moment to just kind of chat with you guys I've been like super busy this year did a lot of traveling been really busy with work as you guys have seen like my upload schedule I haven't even been able to maintain like the two video upload schedule that I normally maintain just because like video editing takes time and I've done my best to put out better quality videos videos like with like more b-roll and stuff like that so that takes more time that between work and video editing the best that i could do is one video a week what am i trying to say with all this i'm gonna do my best to kind of film more of my actual life in terms of content more like lifestyle just because like i feel like i've said i feel like i've said everything i had to say about minimalism for my og subscribers you guys know that i've been making minimalism content for the past six years yeah, my channel is six years old and I was like, I was publishing three videos a week for the past five years on minimalism. I was like, I don't know what more you guys want me to say. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I mean like comment down below if you want me to like make more minimalism videos, but like, I just feel like there comes a point where you just have to like live your life. And I feel like I'd rather film that and sh share that with you guys. Just like what is actually like living life as just like a practical minimalist, you know, somebody who doesn't have like a lot. Hey, you can see me have like a lot of things. You guys can see that I do have more things than is more typical of like minimalists or like the stereotypical minimalist. But I feel like I finally have like the right amount, that sweet spot that Marie Kondo talked about. And I feel like that is the healthier way to live life. So yeah, I just feel like I'm at a place now where I don't want to make as many top 10 tips to yada yada yada, but maybe more like lifestyle content because I feel like more so I kind of want to do that for myself. Now that I'm in my 30s, I have become so aware of how precious time is. I think in my 20s, I was so hard core on like delayed gratification and work really hard for a better future yada 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 but i feel like right now in my 30s i'm realizing like you really only have so much time on this earth and so i want to document my life journey and do that for my own mental health sake so and i wanted to share that with you guys but primarily that and i realize every day is precious and so because of that i've made it my like mission to live my best life every day and do the things that make me happy working out eating well video editing obviously when i'm like not at work and taking care of myself i've been like really big on self-care and taking care of myself and my own health because i feel like I'm, i kind of sort of neglected that in um recent times i hadn't been in the greatest of headspace um, a couple years ago when i was still living at eleanor my mental health was garbage you guys would see that i would like cry on camera so in recent years i've been working really hard to take care of myself because i realized that at the end of the day the only thing that i have that is mine is myself material possessions come and go as you guys know that i was in taiwan and a lot of my stuff had been separated from me so i realized that material possessions are not the most important thing i'm the most important thing so because of that i've been putting a lot more emphasis on taking care of myself so because of that yeah i'm gonna be filming more of like just taking care of me and i hope that i can inspire any of my little cobra babies to take care of yourself because at the end of the day you are your most precious asset so you definitely deserve your your own self-love and dedication and time and priority anyway let's get into our little mini run you guys know that i love doing these in the morning it just kind of helps me like get in the zone i just i feel so good i feel so healthy it really helps my mental health i know i feel not the greatest when i don't run as often this tends to happen more in the winter when the snow makes it impossible to run so i want to take advantage of the fact that it's still summer and i can fully enjoy my run what do you guys think of my roots they've grown out quite a bit i want to grow it out I want it to come down to like maybe like my neck. I want like all virgin hair. And then I think I might do like a fade in color, like a brown tone.
tone to kind of fade in the black and the blonde to create kind of like a balayage but i kind of want to wait a couple more months maybe maybe a year maybe 12 months and then give it that fade and i think that that will look on point comment down below what you guys think i actually do like the blonde and the black roots i think it's a vibe i don't know i think it's really flattering i think it's because i have very black brow and eyes so the black it just kind of all matches and then the blonde kind of like matches with my skin so i don't know that's my theory so uh yeah let's get to running okay so i've put on my gym attire it's a <laughs> pretty like unexciting what shirt is this this is my under armor it's a long sleeve it's a runner shirt and then for the pants it's just like some pair of like runners shorts that I got from that which is a store in Taiwan And yeah, let me show you guys in the actual mirror. I think it'll look better So that's what my outfit looks like pretty cute very humble and low-key, but she gets the job done My hair is looking pretty good. I've been doing these heatless curls just because I don't really want to waste time dealing with my hair you guys know that bleached hair is a lot more damaged so it doesn't really take the curl pattern very well but I do miss my curls so the heatless curl thing is a great combo to that it allows me to enjoy curls like very nice defined curls without adding any more additional heat to my already processed hair so it looks pretty it's cute it's low maintenance it's heat free so it's like a win-win which I'm really happy about These are my Ultra Boosts. I have two pairs. I have this pair that Will got for me in Taiwan. And then I also have this older pair. And they're a little bit more wasted. They have like a hole here, which is like <laughs> the reason why Will was like, let's get you a new pair. It's raining outside, so I'm going to be wearing my older pair. I barely wear these. I only wear these when the weather is terrible so that they get all beat. And <laughs> my new ones stay intact. Comment down below if you guys do weird things like that. This is like not very anti-minimalism. Normally, minimalism would advocate for you to get rid of these and just keep these. But I find that in my minimalism journey, I want to keep a pair of ratty pair because then I'll damage my good pair. And I don't know, I just don't really like that. Hey guys, so I just came back from my run and right now I'm just going to be doing my skincare. I haven't put anything on my face yet and I thought we could do my skincare routine together just to show you guys how I have my skin looking, in my opinion, pretty good. I mean, I'm still human. I still get breakouts. You guys can see I have some like red spots here because, you know, human. <laughs> so yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I do is I put on this um, Hatomugi skin conditioner. This is just rice water. I swear by this stuff. Look guys, it's brand new. You guys have seen my other videos like I pretty much finished the bottle So I picked up a new one. So let's put that on Okay, there we go. So that's done. So that's to like tone my skin The next thing that I go in with is this bio essence. These two are my holy grails I've been using these things for years. This one is probably like my I don't even know how many bottles Every time it's done, I pick it up. I used to pick it up a lot while I was in Taiwan, but I just got another bottle while I was in Taiwan. So when this is done, I actually have no way of replenishing this. This is Singaporean, actually. It's not even Taiwanese. But yeah, essentially, it's 24 karat gold and rose water. It has like the prettiest like gold flakes. I don't know if you guys can see. 
little gold flakes there, which is really good for like anti-aging. I'm obviously not trying to be ageist in my content. I really am just trying to achieve like a healthy, vibrant look. As you guys know, I'm in my 30s. So I think embracing aging with grace is the way to go because you can't fight aging, we're all gonna die. So the least I can do is just take care of myself. And I figured I'd share that with you guys. That's all that I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to show self love and self care to myself and hope for the best. Eat well and skincare. That's pretty much the most preventative thing that I can do. There's really only so much that like Botox and all these rejuvenation things can do without breaking the bank. I feel like you still need to do on the daily maintenance. So that's that's, that's what I try to show on my channel, just a realistic vibe. So the next in, I go in with Mario Badescu's The Aloe Rosewater Facial Spray. This is actually new to my routine. I didn't ever have this in my routine, if you guys have seen my routine. So, oh my gosh, so refreshing. I freaking love this stuff. I love rose water, so I thought I'd give it a try. My mom got this for me while we were at Nordstrom. It was $11. I feel like it's more than that at Shoppers, but I give it a try because I've been kind of more into a dewy moisturizing kind of vibe I've been a lot more heavily focused on skincare than makeup makeup honestly I have very little makeup like it's pretty much like it, it all fits in a bag but my whole skincare it's a lot because I feel like I'm at a stage in life where I want to take care of myself I don't want to be putting like more toxins on my face than I have to. So next, I go in with the Innisfree. This is the green tea serum. I love this stuff. So good. I'm like halfway through the bottle. This stuff is like a holy grail of mine. I've been using this for all five years of med school. Whether there has been an effect has yet to be seen, but no need to fix what ain't broke. Next up, I go with a toner. So this one is the Royal Honey Propolis. I saw Pony use this, the Korean skin influencer makeup artist. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm super highly influenced by K-beauty. So yeah, I ended up getting this too. This was like a super big trend, the Honey Propolis. I don't feel like it's as big of a trend anymore. This one is the Skin Foods. This is a Korean brand, but I still really like it. I think it's really good. It smells really good. Just give that a few pumps, put that into my skin. Honey has really good skin properties, lots of nutrients, so anything that's good enough to eat is good enough for your skin. I just realized that the majority of my skincare is all food-based. Like literally my Hatamugi rice water, rose water, I guess you, you could eat a rose, that's a plant. Rose water, aloe, you can also eat that. Uh, green tea, you can eat that. Honey, you can eat that. I think the only thing in my skincare that you could not eat is probably this one. This one is the Holika Holika Snail Skin Repair Emulsion. This is snail oil. This you probably couldn't eat, but I mean, it still comes from an animal. Wait, you could eat a snail. Yeah, everything that I put on my face, you could eat. <laughs> so yeah, so next up I have the Black Snail Repair Emulsion with, what do you call that, snail mucus. This is an emulsion, so if you guys notice that I try to go from like thinnest to thickest to make everything go on neatly. Obviously the skincare routine is, it would be a lot faster if it was just me, like when I'm not filming content, like I'm just like pa 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 But I'm going obviously a lot slower for the sake of this video, but literally no more than like five minutes. Then the next thing that I go in, so I recently picked up these two. I don't know if I filmed this or not, but let me put you guys onto this. So I have recently got into retinol. So this is the 1%. This is from The Ordinary. Let me show you guys. It's like a dark bottle because it is like a vitamin, what is this, like a vitamin C? derivative. This is to just be used at night, so I'm not wearing this right now because it is the morning. What I do use though is this one. So this is Argireline and this is like apparently like a patented French product that targets the dynamic facial lines. So the place that I find I am starting to kind of age in a little bit is um, the nasal labial folds. That's been the first place where I notice signs of aging. It runs in the family. It's genetics. You really can't fight genetics. My mom has them and my dad and they're kind of deep. <laughs> so I guess it's because we like the way we laugh and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just like natural process of aging, but I wanted to help it out as much as possible. So I ended up picking this up and I really do feel like it has made a difference. They have become a lot less prominent. I've been using this for about three weeks now. Actually, almost a month. Wow, how time flies. I bought this in July and it's already August. And yeah, I just like take a pump of it. Like the bottle's actually almost done. I need to consider getting another one. 
It's really affordable. It's only $10 at Sephora. I've gotten a lot more into like anti-aging, not because I'm trying to be ageist or anything like that, but just because like I am a big believer in prevention over having to do more extreme matters later on. I fell down this rabbit hole of looking into Botox after I did the TikTok old age filter and it just kind of had me like a little bit scared. Like I'm only human guys, like I fear aging because like a human, I fear mortality. I fear my own death. I think that's normal. So because of that, I started looking into Botox, but they're like better to do more preventative things before you start taking more extreme measures like uh, Botox. So that kind of comforted me. So I picked up retinol and I picked up the Argeline, which I figured would be really good. Oh, I also like putting it on the back of my hands. Before I consider Botox, I think I can hold off for another five more years before I consider it. I will look into it again, depending on how my skin is looking like in my late 30s or entering my 40s. So I think that buys me a couple more years of just like relying on preventative measures. Like a thing that I really swear by that I think has helped me tremendously for my entire 20s and late teens. I was a religious or am still a religious sunscreen user. I don't know why. I just was told once in a shoppers, they were like, you should use sunscreen. And I was like, Okay. They said it was good for your skin. They didn't necessarily say it was like anti-wrinkling or anything like that. They just said it was like good for like sun protection. I've always been really big on taking care of myself. So I was like, okay, let's use it. And I think that that has really paid off now in my 30s. I feel like I look quite healthy. Like it's not that I look young for my age. I feel like I just kind of have elongated the aging process. Like I still look like I'm in my late 20s, which is the vibe I'm going for. I, my face feels like I've kind of slow down how much I'm aging. Like I'm still aging. Like you guys can see when I guys smile, I still get crow's feet and I have nasal labial folds. But when my face is kind of like in a rest, I still feel like I still look like I'm in my late twenties. Like when I started my YouTube channel, I feel like I still more or less look the same, which is what I've been going for. Not that I'm trying to look younger. I'm just trying to just look the same for as long as possible. What I like to use is sunscreen. Any sunscreen will do. I really like La Roche-Posay. This one is 60 SPF. You're supposed to apply SPF throughout the day. So I've kind of gotten into the habit now of reapplying my sunscreen twice a day, once in the morning and then again in the midday. I have used the mineral type and the chemical type. This one is the chemical type. It started burning my eyes. Comment down below if that ever happened to you guys but using like a chemical sunscreen. If you like get in your eyes, it burns. But I find that with the La Roche-Posay, I don't have that issue. So that could just be like a me thing. Okay, so now that my skin is done and looking like a freaking donut, <laughs> like a glazed donut, let's put our hair down and let's do some very minimal makeup. So as I've mentioned, I really don't wear much makeup on the daily just because like, as you guys seen, I have a more extensive skincare routine. I would rather allocate more time towards like skin maintenance so because of that i just i really forego makeup in my daily life but for the sake of this video i figured we have time i have a light work day today so i was like you know what let's have a little bit of fun and do our makeup together i'm going to show you guys what i would use for like the latest foundation so i've been really big into these type of like makeups that are heavy on skincare. So I had last year or yeah, last winter, I picked up the All Hours Foundation by YSL. And this one is very skincare based. It has like hydrolonic acid and like other properties, which I think is fantastic because most of my skincare up until this point never really had any kind of focus on skincare. The other one that I also picked up was this one, the ELF. This is the Halo Glow Liquid Filter. A lot of people were saying like, this is a great Charlotte Tilbury dupe. I have not tried the Charlotte Tilbury, but I have to say that I really, really, really like this one a lot. This one is also really big on skincare. This is infused with squalene and hyaluronic acid, which is a freaking good. I love how glossy and dewy it makes you look. I'm debating which one. This is kind of like a heavier coverage look, but since I'm going to be home today, I'm just going to go with the lighter one. Plus, I've been really into how pretty this looks, so let's just put that on. I love the like little doe foot. It's like really thick and cute. It blends in so beautifully. Oh my gosh, I freaking love it. I love how it's like a super dewy and glossy and at the same time, like not too much coverage. It doesn't really look like you're wearing like a lot of makeup. If you're wondering what color I have, I have shade one fair because you guys know I am like super pale. I think I am like, I'm about as fair as like redhead. So whatever looks good on a redhead is good enough for me. I really like my pale skin. I grew up very influenced by Asian beauty standards. And obviously like this is very colorist and I think it's such a shame. I think all skin tones are 
beautiful. But I grew up very proud of my fair skin because of the way that Asian culture would exalt it. Actually, even Latino culture. Since we have every shade in Latino culture, we have mulatas, which are like dark skinned, all the way to like very fair. And it's very colorist, but pale skin is also idolized a lot in Latino culture. I feel like less so now that um, Latino culture is really popular in music. Everyone loves that like caramelly Jessica Alba kind of vibe. But growing up, I was always exalted from my pale skin. So I've always loved my pale skin. I've is one of my favorite features, which is I think is really interesting because recently after I dyed my hair blonde, I started getting more into Western makeup and I noticed that a lot of people talked about panning and I think that is really interesting because to me that just seemed like so counterintuitive, like why would I want to tan when my best feature is my skin? So it's just like really interesting because it's just skin, but society puts these notions on what is and is not beautiful when it's like, it's not like it's, it's just skin. All skin types are beautiful. Okay, so there you go. Do you guys see how much like that blends in, it creates like the prettiest gloss and guys it's like so affordable i am obsessed with elf like i'm gonna show you guys my other i don't know i just recently have been, been getting into like really just like affordable walmart cosmetics <laughs> like they well i can't speak for like other ones but like elf elf is amazing i love elf like i'm obsessed with elf i think elf is freaking fantastic elf if you're watching this sponsor me <laughs> so I was um, I was at Walmart with Will and I've been really into the clean girl Well, I am into the clean girl aesthetic. You guys know that like that is no secret on my channel And I was like, you know what like I'm gonna do my brows in that clean girl aesthetic manner and like I was gonna do the brow lamination But I was like, maybe you might not even like that look Nat So before we do something extreme like laminating our brows why don't you try like a brow lamination, like a DIY one at home? So I went to Walmart and I picked these up and I was like, okay, let's give this a try. And I've been loving it. It really is like at home brow lamination because the thing about brow hair is like when I got it bleached, I know how long my hair grows back and like it's like a month. And I was like, am I really gonna be paying $90 to have a brow lamination here in Toronto for that to only last a month? I don't know. I'm not saying never, I might consider it, but I was just like, <sighs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is actually pretty good. So let me show you guys this one. And I actually really like it a lot. So this one is the e.l.f. Brow Soap. And it's literally just like a bar of soap. At first I was like, that's really weird. I was like, oh. But I actually really like it a lot. So you just take like a crooked spoolie. I have two, I have like a straight one and I just took a crooked one. And then you pretty much just rub it into the soap. So you pretty much just rub it into the soap. It works a bit more better with like water. But I don't have water at the moment, so... And you pretty much... Let me get closer. So you pretty much just comb the hairs up. I've been going for a more thicker, bushier brow because when I saw what I looked like without brows, I was horrified. And it made me not take for granted the fact that I have very thick brows. I love my brows. So it's funny, it's like, it isn't until you lose something that you like learn to appreciate something. Because of that, I've been obsessed with making my brows look thick and full. Obviously brow lamination would probably be better, but in terms of like doing it at home, just like real quick, like not even like five seconds, it's actually really good and I like it a lot. And then the other thing that I do is like since I've just been like maintaining like the most basic routine is like I just like curl my lashes and I use one of two mascaras that I have which I will show you guys in a sec. Yeah, so for mascara, I've been using the YSL Lash Clash and I think this stuff is fantastic. It gives me like that very thick lash look because I have very contrasting features. I have very pale skin and very dark hair. I find that I can get away with like very black mascara because I know that for like the clean girl aesthetic usually a lot of people either advocate for like the clear lashes or for brown lashes but because i have such dark features it doesn't look crazy on me like do you see that like it just blends in so nicely so that is probably the only two makeups that i do it's it's mostly skincare based and then just to accentuate my best features which is like my skin texture and then my long lashes you guys know that i'm very naturally hairy the biggest blessing of that is the thick lashes and the thick brows the facial hair has been a nightmare but i've been pretty good about that i i do the dermaplaning at home i bought those little facial shaver thingies so like i shave my face every other day like i don't want to over exfoliate my skin but that has really helped a lot with like getting the peach fuzz off and making sure that everything just like the skincare and the makeup 
like all of it just like fits together and it's like not getting caught in like my facial peach fuzz. And then the last thing that I do just to top it off, I usually just, I go for like a clear like liquid. So this is a PR package from Merit. They had sent me the, what is this one? This one is the Bel Air, the shade tinted lip oil. Oh my gosh, I love this stuff guys. Like I'm pretty much almost halfway done and I'm probably going to buy a, one on my own unless um whoever that subscriber is that works at Merit sees this. Do you guys want to send me more Merit products? I'm like I'm obsessed with Merit. I've pretty much finished all of my Merit products. I finished the mascara and I decluttered that. I put that in the little disposal box. Fora and then what else did I do? Got rid of something else. Like I, I like finished the products. They're freaking amazing. I love Merit. I, I, I love Merit's like aesthetic. But anyway, my face is done. I'm gonna give it one last like little spray with the Mario Badescu just to like set it all in. But then I just take this facial spray and like I just spray it and like set it in. And like, I am like literally in like my glaze donut era. I freaking love it. And then just to kind of like top it off, I just put on some hand cream. So I've been loving this hand cream, guys. This one is Chanel. This is like my first Chanel product. And this was a gift from Will's cousin. It smells so freaking good, oh my gosh. It is a bit pricey, so I really don't recommend it. I don't like to recommend expensive products if I, if I can avoid it because I know that my subscriber base is primarily young and I don't want to influence bad shopping habits. Like, oh my gosh, you need a Chanel hand cream. I think that is so toxic and unhealthy. That's why I want to say that it was a gift. I didn't buy it myself. I would never buy a $90 hand cream, so. Okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna go eat something. Actually, yeah, let's, let's go eat. I'm hungry, this took forever. <sighs> Hey guys, so I'm back at my desk and I kind of wanted to sit down and just kind of have like a little chit chat with you guys How cute is my wedding mug? It says I do. This was a gift from my mom. Like so freaking cute My mom always watches my videos. So mommy, thank you so much for the cup. I love it. I love it a lot Muchas gracias. Super lindo esta tacita. Me encanta. William siempre está usando la tacita negra Yo uso la blanca y él usa la negra. Entonces siempre estamos Yay, usando las juntas y me encanta esta parte aquí hecho de oro tan linda. But anyway, coming back to a little chit chat. Sorry, it's like kind of wet. <laughs> I kind of wanted to have like a moment to sit down. I have a really light work day today, so I thought I'd have more time for like video editing and stuff like that. There's just a few things that I kind of wanted to like talk about. Sorry, just checking the time. Just kind of wanted to talk about like pretty privilege. <laughs> And like the sheer amount of work that goes into it. You guys probably don't know this because obviously only I can see my own analytics. But yeah, some videos that have gone really viral, at least for my channel, is my pretty privileged videos. Those are really popular on my channel. And I think that's like really interesting because like 
you guys know that I never thought I had pretty privilege. Like, I mean, I made that video. Okay, so, okay, let me tell you guys the story. <laughs> so the first video I made was actually like not to buy into pretty privilege. It's a lot of like waste of money and a lot of waste of time, right? And it's like not worth it. That was my original video. And I had so many comments of people saying like, that's not fair, you can't say that. Only a pretty person can say that, blah, blah, blah. And I was just so shocked. So then it made me like reflect on myself and I was like, has there been times where, you know, pretty privilege did play into my life? And there were actually, there was actually quite a few and I mentioned those in the video. And then like, it's just made me really reflect on my life to what extent is there that privilege that like I honestly legit legit didn't even feel like that was a privilege in my life because the thing is guys like I honestly centered my life around the idea that I'm not pretty I was never gonna be pretty I was never going to you know be a model or exploit that privilege so I better work really hard on making sure my life is put together outside of my beauty you guys know I went to dental school and I'm a teacher so everything that I base my life around my value as a woman is centered around my intelligence um, so I don't have have to rely on my looks whatsoever but after having made that video it's made me really reflect on how much like time and money goes into being beautiful i'm not naturally blessed with good looks um <laughs> you guys know that i've had braces i've had lasik i've had laser hair removal but those are the primary ones and that's how, that costs money that costs time working out and looking you know fit like these muscles that's from like lifting weights which you also have to buy or pay for a gym membership and stuff like that so i'm just i'm really like it's a privilege yes but it's like it's not cheap and it's not easy and i really do stick by what i said that there is definitely a lot more better investments of your use and time outside of your looks because like the sad thing is women's looks is a timed asset you do lose your looks as you age which is just you really want to invest that much time and effort into something you're going to lose over time that's like outside of your control that's why i've always been really a big advocate for as a woman you should get educated because that's something that no one can take away from you that's a resource you can carry with you for a really long time long after your looks have passed like people are not gonna not hire me as a teacher because like i'm not young anymore like it actually works in my favor to have been a teacher for a long time to have lots of like life experience so that's something that i kind of wanted to mention on my channel yes i do make a lot of pretty privileged videos but i want to let you guys know that there's other more useful things that you could do outside your looks i know that life is definitely a lot easier when you're prettier and that's why i did mention like while you should be educated it doesn't hurt to work on your looks but it's not a, such a massive privilege that you should negate or neglect other aspects of your life because honestly this whole like me making making more of these like beauty videos and just showcasing how much effort goes behind the scenes. I mean, I'm not a naturally pretty girl. I'm sure that if you're naturally pretty, maybe it's very easy and it comes very easy to them and they don't need to struggle the way that I need to struggle. But as somebody who is not naturally beautiful, someone who has to put in a lot of work to even like put, you know, something together. Like this is a lot of skincare. This is a lot of like nutrition. This is a lot of working out. Even my hair, this was bleached $500. Uh, I have to like put it in a heatless curl the night before. Like it is, it is an F ton of work. So I just, wanted to kind of put that on the table you know honestly i feel like social media makes pretty privilege look super freaking amazing and super effortless and i'm sure it is for some people but it isn't for me and i guess i wanted to be transparent about that and share that with you guys that i look the way that i do with a lot of work so i don't know if that could comfort somebody else because i feel like that comforts me a lot because me growing up the reason that i didn't think i had pretty privilege is because i felt like i had to put in a lot of work to even look half decent so therefore if i was naturally pretty that's like a naturally pretty easy effortless pretty is the type that has pretty privilege because like they're just pretty and life is good versus i have to put in so much effort so i didn't think i benefited from it but i guess at the end of the day nobody really cares what effort went on in the back the final result is the most important thing so i mean yeah the other aspect that i wanted to touch upon that is that like i think that focusing too much on pretty privilege is not good for your mental health and that's something that i have suffered from there was a period of time where i started to feel kind of anxious about you know being in my 30s now and as a youtube content creator i was like people are not gonna want to watch me anymore i've hit my expiration as a woman like it's over for me like i'm competing with these young pretty 20 year olds like on tiktok on youtube the new wave gen z like it's over for me as a millennial i have no value to provide whatsoever in society and that was so emotional taxing on me so because of that I, I just want to put out there that I don't think being a hundred percent you know fully focused on this pretty privilege is good for women's mental health because as I've mentioned it's an asset you'll lose so you should focus your energies on something else yes be pretty but realize that you want to create another foundation outside of that because this is fortunately not something that you will have forever unless you are Angelina Jolie <laughs>
Another thing I also kind of wanted to talk about is a gratitude and one's mental health in terms of like feeling pretty. For me, something that has really helped me a lot in recent times has been just kind of like practicing a lot more gratitude. I had picked up one of these books. Actually, Will got me this for, I think it was Christmas, but it has helped my mental health so much. I see a lot of like lifestyle influencers use this book and I thought it was very gimmicky. Then I started using it and it has really helped my mental health a lot because I, I realized that I'm a very realist, pessimistic type of person. I'm always a perfectionist and looking for the next best thing to improve myself on so I'm never good enough for myself and that has really damaged my mental health for many years but like something that's like really helped me a lot is that now I'm happy today and that's actually one of the beautiful things about being older in your older age is that like I've kind of realized that there's actually so many years that you have in my 20s, I thought I was going to live forever, but now in my 30s, I practice being happy every day. Every day matters to me now. I didn't used to do that. I didn't used to cherish my runs or my coffee or sleeping in or whatever, what have you. That All of it was a chore to me. But now when I realize that my days are numbered, I'm not saying like I'm going to die soon, you know, God forbid, but I just, I realize how precious every day is and how special every day is and how special the small things are, which is interesting because I'm less of a minimalist now than I ever have been. When I was more of a minimalist, and I was every single day trying to tell myself to find things to be grateful for. I couldn't find anything to be grateful for. Everything was not enough and it was just so bad for my mental health. But now that I've actually let go of my extreme minimalism and just being like a more chill, relaxed minimalist, I actually find there's a lot that I'm really grateful for. I'm really grateful for the surplus of clothing that I have, really grateful for all the Aritzia and Lululemon pieces that I have, really grateful for all my PR packages, really grateful for all the things that Will has bought me throughout the years, that my family has bought me throughout the years. I'm like in such a place of abundance. I have such an abundance mindset which is so ironic because I used to preach that all the time when I was an extreme minimalist and I really truly did not feel abundant in my lifestyle but now that I've kind of become a lot more I guess relaxed with my minimalism I feel like there's a lot more gratitude and abundance in my life which is like so 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 freaking good but anyway this video I think is probably one of by like, I think this video is by far one of my longest videos yet so I'm going to put on pause this and yeah just wanted to share that with you guys I hope that you guys enjoyed like a chill day with me like a relaxing day with me I wanted to share that with you guys and I will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye